The first thing I need to do, just for safety's sake, is replace the brake pads. The front right brake is making some unpleasant sounds, and it's just going to get worse. The front left should get fixed at the same time, it just hasn't sounded bad yet. The jack that comes with the van will do for this. Once it's in place, before the wheel is off the ground, I'll loosen the wheel nuts. Much easier with the pavement holding it still. That star pattern isn't really needed when removing the nuts, but it's a good habit, so why not? Once the tire is high enough, I put a jack stand by it for safety. Right, the wheel's off. We can see that the brake rotor is grooved from occasional neglect over the years and should perhaps be machined, that is, smoothed on a lathe, or replaced. We'll look more closely later. The real problem right now is on the back of the brake caliper. The guide pins that hold the pads in place have been removed so many times the heads have worn round. My hex wrenches are not able to grab a hold of them. This little socket bit is a 916 bolt extractor socket made specifically to fix this problem. Just attach it to the ratchet as usual, fit it over the poor old bolt head, and it actually came free much easier than I thought it would. The little thing is amazing. Remove the lower guide pin in the same way, and we're good to go. The second was more stuck than the first, so I put the first back in, enough to hold it in place and give me leverage. After that it was easy going. Once the pins are out, the caliper slides right off. The brake pads are held to the caliper bracket by a metal clip on the top and bottom. Though I'm less than worried about scratching up an already scratched rotor, I'm still careful when I lever them off. This one isn't too bad yet, but the one on the back, yikes! It looks like it was completely skipped last time the brakes were done. No wonder it's making horrible noises. The back of the rotor is seriously grooved, and I should probably spend the $33 to replace it. This is a new brake pad, all shiny and clean. Unlike me. It fits into the clips very easily and snaps into place. Remember, I'll be replacing the rotors, which is just a matter of loosening the bracket and sliding it off, but I don't have them handy for this video. With the pads in place, we just need to reopen the caliper, which is clamped down too far for the thickness of the new pads. Finding the brake fluid level in a Sienna is odd. It's not with the rest of the engine, but way over here on the side by the wiper arm. Remove the protective cover and the debris around the cap and pry the thing off so the fluid can come back up to level. To force the caliper back, I'm using a C-clamp. Beerus are having a heart attack right now because I haven't shielded the caliper from the metal clamp with wood or anything, but honestly, it'll do this old thing no harm. Every few turns I test whether it'll fit over the pads because I don't want to go back farther than I need to. The right level is actually pretty close to flush.
Once it fits, if snugly, I get my new guide pins that come in a handy little pack from the parts store, apply the brake lubricant to them, and in they go. Be careful not to over torque the pins. They only need about 30 foot pounds of torque and can easily break. Over torquing is probably what caused their trouble to begin with. Once the caliper bolts are secure, I insert the guide pins and tighten them properly, and the brakes are back together. Now about that star pattern I mentioned before. You need your wheel to be on perfectly evenly and securely, obviously. The easiest way to be sure of this is to attach each nut at the farthest point from the previous nut you attached, as possible, which will cause you to attach them in a star pattern. And to be sure to wiggle the wheel as they get tighter to be sure that wiggling them afterwards is not possible. Keep using that star pattern throughout the whole process and you'll be much more sure that it's tight and secure. Once fairly tight, lower the jacks of the wheels against the ground and give it real weight to make them firm. Notice that the brake fluid level is back to full. Looks like we don't need to add any. Close it up, put away your tools, and you're done. I should probably point out that it takes more tightening of the wheel nuts to be sure than I showed here, and I recommend checking them again in a few days to be certain. Also, the first thing you'll want to do when starting the van the first time afterwards is press the brake pedal a few times until it firms up. This will get the caliper in the right position so that the brakes actually work. Don't skip this step. Speaking of skipping steps, due to some technical problems, I didn't show absolutely everything. I already mentioned that the rotors need to be machined or more likely replaced. Also, the brake clips should be cleaned before popping the new pads in. And remember, the brake loop goes on the caliper pins and nowhere near the actual rotor or pads. Very, very bad things will happen. And for goodness sake, don't let the caliper hang from its hose while you work. Carefully set it on top like I did, and it will go much better for you.